Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our first ever Year 7 virtual open evening. Uh, thank you so much for, for joining us tonight, uh, and, and hopefully we'll be able to answer as many of your questions as possible, give you a little bit more insight into the, the history of the UTC, tell you a little bit more about the, the Year 7 process, and I imagine one of your first questions is, why now in May are we only finding out that there is a, a secondary school in Peterborough with a Year 7? So uh, hopefully I'll be able to talk to you about um, how we found out quite late in the process. Uh, but more importantly, um, what the UTC is, uh, and if you are interested after hearing from a few staff today, how you apply and, and also how that works, given that you are probably already in receipt of, of an offer for a secondary school uh, and, and the support that we can provide uh, and the, the security that the local authority have guaranteed in terms of, of how this whole application process works. But again, first and foremost, just a, a huge, huge thank you for, for tuning in and, and hopefully we can, uh, we can answer all your questions. So the format for today is you're going to see me three separate times. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit of brief history about who we are, what we are uh, and what we do. Uh, I'm then going to hand over to my colleague, Brina Phelps, who is the transition manager uh, and is also the head of year seven. Uh, and she's going to talk a little bit more about the, the year seven offer, uh, what we look for in our students, the typical UTC student, um, and give you a bit more of an insight into your child's experience when they come here. She is going to mention something called expeditionary learning. You're going to hear that a few times tonight. Um, uh, and then once Brina has spoken, it's going to come back to me and I'm going to go into a bit more detail and just explain what that means. Because expeditionary learning is how the children will learn in year seven, year eight and year nine at the UTC. And it is very, very different from what other secondary schools do. You, you will see lots of similarity, actually, from all of the amazing work that the primaries do. And, it, and we're looking to take that fantastic work uh, and slowly move towards a typical secondary curriculum. So, you know, your, your children in year seven here are not going to come to the UTC and have 25 hours in seven different classrooms with seven different teachers. But I'll explain more about that in due course. You are then going to hear from my director of student support, Lynn Donaldson, who will talk a little bit about um, how we look after children and, and what support mechanisms we have in place. And then back to me again at the end for any questions. So without further ado, there is a very rough plan of what you are going to see in here today. Uh, like I said, a little bit more about us looking at our curriculum, specifically looking at this expeditionary learning and then some questions at the end. Now, with regards to questions, you'll notice that there is an option on your screen to, to type in questions at any point. Please do so. Please don't wait till the end to type your questions in. You can type them in. They do come up live on my screen. Um, and it may be that some of the questions you ask, we're able to answer throughout the presentation. So it may be that we can just type a response. We can send you um, either a direct answer or we can send you an email address of someone that can give you a better response. If your question is relevant to, to everybody, then I will probably answer it live at the end. So in terms of the people that you're going to see and hear from today, there's myself there on the left. Um, so again, I'm David Bisley. I'm the principal of UTC. I've been here since we opened in 2016. Uh, I, at that point, I was there as the vice principal. Uh, I'm now in my third year here uh, as principal. So September 2021 will be my fourth year in charge. Um, you've also got Brina Felks there in the white top. Brina is uh, the head of year seven and transition manager. Lynn Donaldson in the black top is my director of student support. Uh, and somebody who you won't see, but is very much here in the background is Beth Malcolmson. Beth Malcolmson is marketing, uh, recruitment uh, and admissions. So lots of you will be dealing and, and, and speaking to Beth, certainly when it comes to the, the admissions process. Uh, and Beth is also the, the IT whiz making sure that everything uh, goes to plan tonight. Also in the background, you have uh, Shelley Kingston. Shelley is a representative from Peterborough Local Authority. So there, there may be questions that are to do with the LA side of things. Uh, and it may be that we, we call upon Shelley to help us if you're asking questions that I'm not sure about. So, first of all, important question. You know, who, what is the UTC? Who are you? Where are you? What do you offer? Um, and, and in some cases, why have I never heard about you? So the Greater Peterborough UTC, or the Greater Peterborough University Technical College. Um, so the first question we often get is, so are you a university or are you a technical college? 
actually we're, we're neither of those. We are a typical secondary school. Um, UTCs are a particular type of school. There are over 50 UTCs up and down the country uh, and each UTC specialises in a particular subject or a particular collection of subjects. So the Peterborough UTC we opened in 2016. Originally we were a 14 to 19 provider so we took students at the start of year 10 where we did their GCSEs, we kept them for A-levels and then we sent them on their way to university or to high level apprentices. This year, or September 2019, for the first time, we were allowed to take year nine students. So our age range moved to 13 to 19. And now obviously we have just found out two weeks ago that the Department for Education have allowed us to take year seven. So, as I mentioned, it is late in the day. It's late in the, in, in the process for year seven applications. We've been wanting this since September last year. It's just taken a long time, unfortunately, for the Department for Education to, to approve this. However, we are ready for September. We've been ready for September since we uh, put the first application process in. So we are very excited about the fact this is happening. Um, we are STEM specialists. And again, my, my colleague Brina will talk in a bit more detail about that. But the subjects of science, technology, engineering and maths are really, really important to us. They are the subjects that we specialise in. They're not the only subjects we do, but they are the ones where we expect our students to have a passion for if you want to come to a UTC. We are only a small school. Our year seven will only be 60 students and that will be three classes of 20. We are a very, very close community, even though we take students from a wide catchment. We take students from four or five different local authorities, including Peterborough, Cambridgeshire, Lincolnshire, even as far as Norfolk. We have students that come here from Corby, from Grantham. So students come from far and wide to access our specialist unique curriculum. Students that understand that we are the only school of its kind in the area. We are the only STEM specialist school in the greater wider Peterborough area. So. A decision to come to a UTC at year seven is a decision to engage fully in expeditionary learning. And I will talk more about that later on in the presentation. But it's also a decision that you understand that when your students get to when sorry, when your children get to year 10 and year 11, they will be taking our specialist GCSE package. All of our students do maths. All of our students do English literature and English language and all of our students will study all three separate sciences. So GCSEs in physics, biology and chemistry. All of our students must also choose one of our specialist GCSEs, be that architecture, design or engineering. They also need to choose from one of our optional GCSEs. So geography, computer science, art or business studies. That is the GCSE option we offer. If your child is wanting to study dance, drama, music, food technology, textiles, then unfortunately we do not offer those subjects. We also don't offer GCSEs in PE or RE or at this moment in time, politics uh, and history. So it's very, very important at this point in time, you know that a decision to join the UTC means, yes, in year seven, eight and nine, we do expeditionary learning. But once they get to key stage four, there are only certain GCSEs that they will be able to access. It's really, really important you understand that because obviously those students then carry on into key stage five and do A-levels or level three equivalents. Uh, and these, again, are very particular to our STEM subjects to our specialist subjects. Again, we don't offer A-levels in sports, dance, drama, music, history, RE. It's very specific to what we offer in Key Stage 4. Um, but also as a UTC, one thing that makes us very, very unique is we have unrivaled employer engagement. So right from Year 7, our sponsors and our employer partners and our education partners are, are in school helping us shape our, our delivery of our education. They, they are in school co-teaching. They are acting as professional mentors to our students. We work very, very closely. 
we able, are able to do site visits so our students are, are able to go and actually see people that are in the sorts of jobs and professions that they themselves may be interested in the years to come. So that gives you a very, very broad overview of the UTC. If you're not sure about where we are, we're right in the middle of Peterborough. If you know where Central Park is, then we are just on the Peterborough College campus, although we are not linked formally to Peterborough College. They are an educational partner of ours, but we are actually on their site. We're tucked in just there between the Thomas Deacon Academy and the Peterborough College. So you access our school through the main college gate or through the back college gate, but we have got obviously our own land, our own outside spaces, our own car parking spaces, our own bike sheds. So we are a completely separate entity. We just happen to be on the same plot of land that the college currently occupies. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of a, uh, of a taste to what the UTC is about. Uh, again, I'll be back on shortly to talk about expeditionary learning, and I will be back on again at the end to answer any questions, including the most important question, how do I apply and what does that look like? What are the timeframes um, for those of you that are interested? So again, thank you for coming along. Hopefully uh, I've given you a little bit of a, a warm up there and I'll now hand over to my, my colleague, Brina Felks, who again, is the transition manager and the head of year seven. So thank you. Hi, I'm Brina Feltz, Transition Manager and Head of Year 7, and it's my pleasure to introduce you to the Greater Peterborough UTC, a dynamic institution with an ethic of excellence in all that we do. We are a STEM specialist school, so in Key Stage 4 and Key Stage 5, students will have the option of studying subjects related to science, technology, engineering and mathematics at GCSE and A-level. Ultimately, the GPUTC is a perfect fit for students with a love of science and mathematics, and our Key Stage 3 curriculum ensures that students are equipped with the knowledge and skills to excel at Key Stage 4. At our school, we are passionate about our uniqueness, our UTC-ness, and as such, your Year 7 students will learn through expeditionary learning which merges elements from different subject areas in an inventive way, mapping each subject's learning objectives from the national curriculum. Instead of students learning separate subjects in separate blocks of time, like they would in other schools, students at the GPUTC will embark on learning that has real-world relevance, that is interactive and collaborative, challenging and rigorous, and develops a student's ability to think critically about real issues facing our society and world. We want our learners to be stimulated and develop problem-solving skills, critical thinking ability, research techniques, and presentation skills, because we value how fundamentally important these skills are to progress onto further studies or progressing on to successful careers in leading industry organizations. Our school motto is readiness, respect, responsibility, resilience. And we expect our students to live up to our high standards. Students are expected to be punctual and arrive for lessons equipped with an inquisitive nature, growth mindset, and relevant subject materials. By the end of their time at the GPUTC, our students are ready for the world of work. Our students harness positive relationships with peers, acting on the notion that they are part of a team and as such, build each other up and help each other to grow. Our students also have professional relationships with all school staff, not just their teachers. GPUTC students must be mature, motivated, and take ownership of their learning by taking advantage of support in lessons, as well as being willing to research and go the extra mile independently. We also expect our students to conduct themselves in a responsible manner in and out of the classroom. GPUTC students are adaptable and show fortitude when faced with change. They overcome adversity using a range of tools at their disposal to deal with challenging scenarios. 
and our students embrace change as an opportunity for positive outcomes. Throughout their expeditions, students will undertake formative assessments, and at the end of each expedition, students will produce work that is authentic and showcases their skills internally within the school and externally to employers, universities, and visitors to the school. This allows our students to stand above the average and builds their confidence as they start to see themselves accomplishing more than what they ever thought possible. If your child has such ambitions, then the GPUTC welcomes their applications for September 2021. Lovely, thank you, Brina. Um, so hopefully that gives you a little bit more insight into the, the type of school we are and the type of student that we typically attract here at the UTC. And again, it's really important because we, we do see a student's experience at the UTC as, as being a seven year journey. You know, it's very much the, the three years they spend in expeditionary learning and then the two years doing their GCSEs and then the two years doing their A-levels because the vast majority of our students go on to university or go on to higher level degree standard apprenticeships. So, you know, that, that journey to university or that journey to apprenticeships very much starts in year seven and it starts with, you know, our expeditionary learning. So. Let's, uh, let's talk a little bit more about expeditionary learning. So again, like I mentioned, rather than sub students go into uh, a maths lesson, an English lesson, a science lesson, etc. Instead, expeditionary learning, it's a combination of studies. It's a combination of subjects. So our students will not go to lots of different subjects, lots of different teachers, which is probably the way that you learn when you were at secondary school. That type of learning, that starts to happen more and more as they move through the school until obviously they get to year nine, 
year 10, year 11, where they do start to go to separate subject teachers. In year seven, all of their learning is done within a year seven team, within that year seven community. Uh, and I'll talk a bit more about the where and the who in a few seconds. But the crux of expeditionary learning is rather than just learning stuff, rather than just learning through topic teaching, instead, you will complete in-depth research of these real life, authentic topics. So we are trying to give our students not just the knowledge required at Key Stage 3, but we're trying to give them authentic experiences that complement the knowledge. Alongside that is the character development. It's making them better, more rounded people ready for the world of work. So let me give you an example. First and foremost, where will they be taught? So we will have a dedicated year seven teaching zone. This comprises of three areas. There is a classroom, there is a computer suite, and then there is a, a design studio workshop space. Year sevens will spend all of their time in this year seven zone. No other students in school will be coming in there. No other students are taught in there. This is their safe teaching space. And the 60 year sevens will move around these three spaces. There will be three members of teaching staff and a dedicated learning support assistant. So four adults at all times supporting these children. Sometimes they'll be taught in groups of 20. It may be that we teach them all as a group of 60 or we break them into smaller groups of 15 or 10. We have the flexibility within these spaces to do what we want. They also get their own dedicated year seven outdoor space. So again, something we're really, really pleased with is if the students, the transition from, from primary to secondary be quite a scary one at times. And we're really, really pleased that we're actually able to give our year sevens um, their own dedicated space and their own dedicated safe space where if at lunchtime and at break time, they're, they're not really confident enough yet to go into the main school. They've got this outdoor space. It's AstroTurf. They've got benches. There's a cover there where they know they've got that safety and security. Once, of course, they are ready to join the main school community. That's amazing. Uh, and they are welcome to, to go into the other social spaces and to go around the school and explore and experience everything the UTC has to offer. But again, we think it's a it's a real positive that we are able to offer our year sevens such a bespoke and such a, a unique little offer that they have got their own teaching space they'll have their own teachers uh, and again the year seven teachers will only teach year seven so we will be recruiting and we are recruiting three specialist expeditionary teachers who will only teach year seven students so they will form this this wonderful bond with these teachers and we talk about this year seven community and this year seven team this is very much part of that and again, the year sevens will have their own dedicated learning support assistant. So this, this person uh, and her name's Emma Donahoe, um, she will be with the year sevens for all of their learning. So again, they'll get to know her really well. She'll get to know your children's specific needs and desires uh, really, really well as well. So we're really, really pleased to have that. So let's look again at the, uh, at the expeditionary learning. So let's have a look in a bit more detail at one of our expeditions. So your child will do somewhere between 10 and 20 of these every single year. An expedition could last four or five weeks. It could last four or five days, depending on the level of detail needed in these individual topics. So when the students join us in September, the first two weeks, we do loads of stuff on community building, team building, icebreakers, getting them to know each other. We also use this opportunity just to get a gauge of where they are academically. Um, obviously taking students from lots of different primary schools, taking students that have just had 18 months of disruption to their learning. There's a lot of work done in that first fortnight to really get to know our students so that we can plan appropriately where there may be extra intervention and support needed or where we can work with students on developing their character. Then the fun stuff starts. So two weeks in, in year seven, we start with our first expedition. Every expedition is started with a guiding question, a big question. So our first expedition is all around planet Earth. And the big question is, are we heading for the sixth natural extinction event? 
are we about to blow up and destroy our planet for the sixth time? Now, from this guiding question comes lots and lots of separate investigations and separate topics. So it could be looking at wildlife, looking at habitats. It could be looking at the, at the world's population uh, and the population increase. It could be looking at, at pollution, air pollution, single use plastic pollution. It could be looking at the food revolution, uh, how we can we can eat more sustainably, how we can uh, farm more sustainably. It could be looking at the science behind the pesticides and the herbicides. Of course, we can't talk about the sixth natural extinction event without going back to the fifth natural extinction event, all that time ago when, when dinosaurs ruled the planet and walked the earth. And let's look at what happened there. Let's look at climate change. Let's look at urbanization. Let's look at areas where the, the density of population is significantly above average. Let's also look at areas where they, they, they aren't populated and can we populate these? Um, and let's also look at things like the industrial revolution. So all of those topics there that we've just talked about, all of those topics will be covered under that one expedition. So just by saying, are we looking at the sixth natural extinction event? You can already see how all of the different subjects start to combine. You can see the geography, you can see the history, you can see the science, you can hear the maths there when we're looking at population increase and decrease. You can see the history and the geography coming through that. And throughout all of these subjects, you know, the ability to, to master the written word and to, to hone in on your oracy skills, you can see where English is embedded in all of these topics. Now, this is just one investigation we're talking about, one expedition and, and one set of, uh, of investigations. Also, every single expedition starts with a hook. So we get the students interested from day one. And it could be a documentary. It could be a guest speaker. It could be a news article. So this expedition, the hook is we will watch a Life on Our Planet documentary by Sir David Attenborough. All the students will sit and they'll watch this documentary. And for those of you that have seen it, it really sets the scene for this expedition. And then all of those topics we study will be linked in to this expedition and to this hook. And then at the end of every expedition, so every single expedition we do, at the end, our students will produce an authentic product. Now that could be a book, it could be a piece of writing, it could be a piece of artwork, it could be something, a public speech or a public production. For this particular one, they are going to produce their own documentary around answering that guided question. So as well as learning loads of stuff throughout the expedition, as well as gathering all of that knowledge, at the end of that expedition, these students will produce an authentic product. Now, these documentaries will be showcased at particular events where we invite you in to see your children's work. We'll be putting them on social media. We'll be sharing them with the wider world so we can showcase just how amazing our children are and the quality, the high caliber quality of work that they will be producing. And every single expedition will have a different type of authentic product. It might be something that they make. It might be something that they design. Like I said, it may be a presentation where we invite you in and they stand in front of, of parents, of visitors, of sponsors, and they actually present. It may be something that's achieved off site. One of the later expeditions that we're looking at is the Field to Fork expedition. And we're hoping that our students will be able to be tour guides around an event at Peterborough Showground. So you can see how we're really not just enhancing their knowledge, but we're really pushing the boundaries of their own character development, their ability to communicate, collaborate, their ability to present, to speak, and to work in teams, but also work independently. In terms of how our children learn during expeditions, again, I want to give you a little bit of an example. So I want to take you back first and foremost to probably what was your own experience of education. Now, I grew up in Peterborough, I was educated in Peterborough, uh, and this definitely rings true to me. How was I taught? I was taught, sat in rows, facing the front, a whiteboard. Uh, I don't think they had projectors when I was at school, but definitely a blackboard and a whiteboard and a teacher talking through things. We were taught something. We were then given a worksheet or a workbook or a textbook, which we worked through and we answered the questions. As we move into the slightly more modern age, obviously, PowerPoints, interactive whiteboards are very much the norm. This isn't how we work in an expeditionary learning environment. First and foremost, 
we don't sit in rows and we don't face the front. Expeditionary learning is about small group work, it's about teamwork, it's about supporting each other through your learning. Yes, of course, the member of staff is in there guiding the learning. There may be times that students are looking at a board, but it won't be the norm. They won't be sat in rows for 25 periods a week listening to someone talk. It is an exploration of learning. Instead, let's look at it a different way. So, rather than looking at percentage increase and decrease, being taught like this on a worksheet or like this on a PowerPoint, let's look at it from an expeditionary perspective. So we know that the population of the world in 1990, which ironically was when I was in year 12, uh, sorry, when I was age 12, when I was in year seven, was 5.3 billion. We also know that within our children's lifetime, so by the year 2100, certainly not my lifetime, but certainly within our children's lifetime, the population of the world will have doubled. So let's spend some time not just doing the maths on how much that is increasing by each section, but let's look at why. Let's look at how it's got to this point and let's look a little bit deeper as to what's driving this change. And more importantly, what this means for the future, what this means for our children's future. And from that, Let's look at things like life expectancy. Let's look at how that's changed over time. Are people living longer? And what impact is that having? What is the, what is the average age of the people on the planet right now? And looking at that graph there, that's showing us that there are more people aged 25 to 45 than there are aged zero to 25. There are more middle-aged people than there are young people. So that tells us that the birth rate is dropping, that the fertility rate is dropping. So let's look at the maths behind that. Let's look at why that is. Let's learn maths, but let's learn it in a way that is authentically linked to a real world problem. And let's link it to an authentic issue that people are currently di discussing and looking at. So if we are, if we're living longer, but we're having less children, what implications does that have for us in the longer term? Because we know the population of the world is increasing, but we know people are having less children. So why is that the case? And what does that mean? What does it mean in terms of pensions? What does it mean in terms of the chances of people working for longer and the implications that has on the planet? All in here, we're talking about maths. This is a maths lesson. And already on the screen there, you can see three or four different ways in which mathematical information can be presented. You've got pictograms, you've got bar charts, you've got other visual representations of numbers. So this is a maths lesson, but this isn't one maths lesson. This is a series of maths lessons investigating different authentic problems, but we're still looking at percentage increase and decrease. We're still looking at numbers. We're still working out the calculations. So we're still learning the knowledge. We're gathering the knowledge to say that we have covered percentage increase and decrease but we're also equipping our students with real life, authentic information that they can take forward. You know, these are conversation and, and topic pieces that, that young people and, and ourselves may be having over dinner tables. You know, when, when parents are asking questions around this, wouldn't it be amazing if your year seven child can turn around and say, well, actually, I can tell you why the population of the world is increasing, but people are having fewer children, because this is something that I've studied in one of my investigations at work, at school, sorry. So that just gives you a small flavor. That is one small investigation, which is part of a bigger expedition, which is part of a series of 10 to 15 expeditions. You can probably tell we're very excited about this. We think expeditionary learning is completely revolutionary. We are the only school. Good evening, everybody. I am just here. I'm at home at the moment, so apologies for the background. Um, I'm just to talk to you a little bit about our pastoral support um, and our kind of the, the student support in general that we offer at the UTC. And I'll be available on the Q&A at the end as well if you have any specific questions. Um, so as David has said, we, we, we're trying to create a really close community for this year seven cohort. Um, they will have their dedicated space and their dedicated team of, of people working with them. And that's partly because what we really want to do is to carry on this kind of community 
feel that we have in the rest of the college. Um, our students are treated like young adults and we know our students and they know us. And we are a very close community. And I think that is something that does set us a little bit apart from other schools. Um, so we are focusing in year seven on this idea of the, obviously the development from primary school, making sure that they are developing themselves, their skills, as well as their academics. So it's very much a holistic approach from the pastoral side of it. Um, but also we have a dedicated welfare team. So where there are problems, where there are people who are struggling, if students are not quite coping with the transition particularly well, we do have a dedicated welfare team. Um, as well as those staff that are, you know, working specifically with the year group. Also, our PSHE sessions and things like that will also be developing on from the skills they've learned in Key Stage 2 um, and, and be building them into the, you know, the young people that we know they can be. Um, so our pastoral support is obviously the, the, the teachers around them, the mentoring, so the, the mentors that we would have in the older year groups, and then our welfare team as well, who can make connections with outside services as and when required. Um, we also offer some support for students who come from disadvantaged backgrounds. So that's anyone who is um, who has free school meals or is entitled to the people premium. What we do there is we have a key stage three and four bursary. So that comes from the people premium funding and that just offers a little bit of support for families who need it. So you can apply for that. And what that does is it allows you to apply for support with learning resources or with uniform costs. Um, and obviously the expeditions and things we're, we're moving towards here any associated costs with those, we will try and support as best we can with the limited funds we have. Um, and in some very rare circumstances, we're able to support with transport as well, if that's within certain parameters. So um, that more information can be found out as you go through the application process on all of that. The final thing I'm here to talk to you tonight is about SCN. So I am our SENCO, our Social Educational Needs Coordinator at Greater Peterborough UTC. Um, we have a small but dedicated team of learning support assistants and my deputy SENCO Melissa. Um, and what we try to facilitate is in class support, it's usually shared with the learning support teams. We try and support as many students as possible. And in the older year group, something that we have been very successful with is teaching the students to be advocates for themselves with support to start with, but in the end to try and make them independent learners. So that would be somewhere who's somebody who might have dyslexia or who has, who's on the autistic spectrum to try and encourage them to be able to make that sort of announcement to a teacher that they need to say I need support with this that's because what we're trying to get them to do is to get them ready for the world of work where they will have to go out there themselves and be an advocate for themselves and to try and get what they need to access um, the resources they need so we've had some great successes with learners going off to employers where they have got an autistic spectrum disorder and where they have been very successful in, in work experience and employment just because we've been working with them over time so that they know how they can ask for the support they need. Um, so we do an awful lot in terms of adaptations. Uh, we also offer um, key worker sessions for some students who need it. What that is, is a kind of fortnightly one-to-one -one with one of our staff to try and think about their targets, what support do they need with their learning. Initially, that member of staff would be the advocate, be the go-between between, between the student and the teachers. But as I say, over time, we do try and encourage students to take that on themselves and, and start to be more mature. Um, so what we try to do is with our staff are very well trained with dyslexia and autism and an ADHD strategies and there's um, the information we hold on students is shared readily and updated regularly with colleagues so that they've got the most up to date information on those learners. And um, we do try, I just wanted to say a little bit about uh, my colleague Emma Donahue who's going to be um, the dedicated learning support assistant for year seven. She has been working with us for the last um, three years, uh, three years, four years. Um, and she's she's brilliant and she's very, very good at knowing how to pull out from teach from students exactly what they need and how they can um, be supported in lessons. So she will be um, a very, a very useful addition to the year 17. Um, so that's just a very, very brief overview of what we do in terms of student support. Um, please do ask any questions. Um, I'm here available on the QA in a moment. So perhaps this would be the right time to hand back to David now for the QA. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you for your questions that have been coming through. Uh, I have been answering a few of them live, um, but there, there are some that I want to sort of go through. So there, there's no kind of particular order to, to the questions. These are very much in, in the order that they've been asked um, down in the Q&A function. Please keep them coming. I can see a few more are coming through as I speak. 
But these are the ones where I felt that everybody would appreciate getting the same answer um, rather than just the individual responses. So first of all, there was a question around after school clubs. So obviously the answer I'm going to give you is the response to what happens in a, um, a normal world before uh, after we've moved beyond um, coronavirus and COVID. Um, so the UTC offers a, a really varied enrichment process. Um, so every single day after school, there, there are clubs, activities and sessions happening for our students. Now, these really vary. So from, from sport to, to STEM subjects, engineering challenges, um, there are computer science challenges. There's all sorts of things going on. The Duke of Edinburgh Award, uh, we're really closely affiliated with the Royal Navy. So we've, we've regularly got lots of Royal Navy challenges um, that, we, that we attend and we compete in. So often... Uh, these teams are getting ready for this event months and months before. Uh, we also open computer rooms every single night so students have a chance to stay behind uh, and study, uh, do homework, finish coursework off. So there's always a space open, be that for independent study and revision or be that for something a bit more fun and a bit more uh, extracurricular based. So in the past, we've done debating clubs, we've done reading clubs, we've done art clubs. There's always a huge, huge variety of things going on. So hopefully that helps with that one. Uh, a question about class sizes. Now, obviously, this, this differs as you move up and down the school. So in year seven, with expeditionary learning, we are looking at have, having three groups of 20 students. Uh, this will carry on into year eight and into year nine. Obviously, as you start to move into your GCSE years, this does depend. It very much depends on the subject you've chosen. Uh, our specialist subjects, the class sizes tend to be smaller, whereas in the core subjects, they do move up to 25, 26 certainly in English uh, and in some of the top set for maths. Moving into sixth form, obviously this drops a little bit because there aren't as many students and there are slightly more subjects that they that they study. Um, a really good question actually about transition plans and, and at the moment, uh, unfortunately, we can't really give a straight answer other than we are planning to have a, a thorough transition process. What we can't answer is when that's gonna happen because we know at the moment, uh, that Peterborough and the surrounding areas remains an at-risk area. Um, so we are being advised and instructed that we can't have lots of groups of students from, from different schools gathering in one space. Um, as soon as that guidance changes, uh, and as soon as we find out that locally uh, we are safe to do so, we are intending to have transition days. So that may be in the final half term, that, that may be over the summer holidays, uh, and again, Going back to something I said earlier in my video, the first two weeks of year seven, it's all around that community building. So what we're not going to do on those first few days in is put students straight into a learning environment. Those first two weeks are really important about creating that year seven unit, about creating that year seven team, about the students and the staff getting to know each other. You know, we want to take them out away somewhere, possibly on an overnight residential, just so they really get a chance to, to sort of break down those social barriers, find out a little bit about each other. And as part of that will be that academic um, intervention and that academic sort of baseline in finding out uh, what the impact of this pandemic has been on these young people, because we know that they'd have had very different experiences over the last 18 months, depending on which school they've gone to uh, and, and how that learning offer looked. For some of these young people, they may be children of key workers, so they may have been in school, but for others, obviously, we know that they may have spent huge periods of time trying to work from home, you know, with the best will in the world, parents trying their hardest to support them. So we use those first few weeks and, and you know, and very much that, that first half term, that first term to really get a gauge on where students are at in terms of their learning. And that helps influence the, the expeditions, that helps us know how much time to spend on particular topics, if that might be something where we've identified that, that students are slightly behind. And again, at, at the end of every expedition, as well as creating this authentic product, there is a rigorous assessment process. So you will be getting uh, sort of report cards um, and assessment grids, which show you exactly what your, your child has learned, what topics, what subjects, um, and also which sort of uh, the, the grading we give them. So if we're looking to where we can support young people, you will know exactly which particular topics that they can work um, and they can do their further studies in. And again, they can stay behind school and they can work in these computer suites and we'll be putting on extra intervention and extra catch up to make sure that all of those gaps in knowledge and all of that lost learning is, is addressed. Um, and that, that's a really important one for us. It, you know, it's, 
we are very used to at, at the UTC taking students every year from lots of different schools and very quickly a creating a community and, and I think you, you speak to any student in any year group and they will talk uh, you know at great length about how quickly they feel like the UTC is their home and that's something we're really very proud of you know we are a, a small school we are a small community but like I've said we do take students from such a, a vast geographical sort of span of places we work really hard to make sure that our students feel like they are um, part of our family and they feel like they belong. Uh, we've had a question about uniform. Actually, at the moment, we, we are still talking about what we want our year sevens to wear. Um, you may be aware that uh, year nine and upwards, our students wear business dress. So they wear shirts, ties, blazers, jackets, jumpers. Uh, there is no particular colour. There's no particular style. There's no particular... Um, badge um you know we we made a decision a few years ago to move away from sort of branded uniform and give our students and our families um slightly more inclusive and open plan uh, take on uniform so it is professional uh, it is smart it is office wear but currently we are thinking about how that works for year seven because the feedback we've got from some of the other utcs with year seven is, is that the professional business wear doesn't quite work as well with year seven and it doesn't quite work with expeditionary learning we want expeditionary learning to be vibrant and to be exciting so we are thinking about what that uniform looks like we will be making a decision within the next week or two and again we'll make sure that that information is, is shared with with plenty of time for parents to uh, to be able to, to sort that out. One thing that wasn't mentioned, uh, and I want to mention it now, is something that we call block five lessons. So expeditionary learning is for four of the five days that your child will be at the UTC. For one of those days, so, so for the other day, should I say, the fifth day, this is where they come out of their expeditionary learning just for that day, uh, and they are taught a few other subjects that are quite specific and quite bespoke uh, and don't organically fit or authentically fit into the expeditions. So PE, and I know there was a question about PE. So, so yes, the students do uh, an hour of PE every single week with a PE specialist. Um, and we do have some, we do have some land. We have a, a sports hall, but we're also right next to Central Park. We also utilise Peterborough College's sports facilities. So we have a, have a, a plethora of options there for PE and they do that every single week. Uh, alongside that is, is RE, PHSE and languages. So PE, RE, PHSE and languages, they are taught all on one particular day and that isn't part of expeditionary learning. So that is slightly different. And it's also a chance for our students to get to meet one or two other teachers. So it's quite a nice introduction to some of the other teachers that we've got. Likewise, when our students do science experiments or when they do some maybe quite highly technical engineering skills, they get to go to the other areas of the UTC where we've got the science labs or the engineering workshops. And it's quite nice. They, again, they get a chance to meet some of our expert teachers and they get a chance to see some of the other adults, always under the supervision of the expeditionary learning team. But they get to see other parts of the UTC. And again, they get to experience that the UTC-ness that we uh, that we then start to see more and more as they move through the school. Uh, so the last few questions until I'll talk about the application process, unless there's any more coming through. Um, it was a really good question about the the maths example I gave and about how our students given sort of the foundations of these topics before we hit them with some quite heavy, deep uh, information. Yes, absolutely. But the difference being you know, if they are going to go through practice questions on, on percentage increase and decrease, which was the example I gave, um, we make sure the examples are relevant to the topic at hand. So if we are looking at percentage increase and decrease, they'll be taught the, the processes, they'll be structured how this, this works, but we won't be looking at apples and oranges, or we won't be looking at the percentage of cars that drive past the house. All the time, our learning is tailored and centered around these investigations, around these expeditions. So the, the structure of the learning is very similar, but it's always related back to these authentic expeditions. And where students are struggling with particular topics, that is where we make sure that there is intervention and support behind those students. So that if they are struggling in that particular session, there's an opportunity to revisit that topic. Um, and again, all of the teachers are subject specialists. We have a school full of subject specialists. So, you know, as a, as a maths teacher myself, I know which topics students find difficult. So I know through expeditionary learning which topics we need to cover two, three, four times. 
I will know which topics need to be covered more than once. I'll also know, as will all the other teachers, which topics need to be taught before certain topics. You, know, you, you can't learn a particular topic until you've done the foundation learning. Uh, certainly prevalent in the sciences, you know, that there's a lot of pre-learning needed. So again, the learning is structured and it's planned so that students understand um, what the uh, what the learning pathway looks like, but also we make sure they get that ground in and they get that sort of baseline in, in learning before we move on to more complex subjects. Always with that common thread of that expedition running through that. So all learning has a purpose, all learning has a meaning. And it we're, we're trying to do away with the question that in, in nearly 20 years of education, you still get students that will ask you the question, why are we learning this? Why is this relevant? You know, when am I going to use this in my life? So expeditionary learning, hopefully, addresses that question before it's asked. You know, it's answering that question before they've had a chance to answer it because they can see when it's being used in real world application because there's always that authentic link to, to real world problems and to some of the, the issues that are going on. And, and again, I you know, look forward to sharing with you the, the wider project lists and looking at all of the different ideas that we've got for future expeditions. Um, there was a wonderful question about university um, percentages. So um, we, we're quite unique at the UTC. I'd probably say at the end of year 13, about half of our students go to university, about half will go on to, to degree level apprenticeships, probably slightly higher than half for university and about 40% for the apprenticeships. What I will say is over three quarters of our students go on to study STEM subjects, either at university or for their apprentice. So they, they very much know that they want to work in the STEM field. They don't know what they want to do yet. And to be honest, in five or six years time, there will be jobs and professions that don't even exist now. So we're not preparing them for particular jobs. We are preparing them to work in a particular sector. And that could be computer science, it could be engineering, architecture, design, it could be the sciences or, or the maths. So we are giving them that skill set. We're giving them those, those employability skills, but also the knowledge um, and, and the behaviours that they need to be successful in these particular fields of work. Um, right, I'm just going to quickly uh, look at the questions just to see if there are a few more there. So uh, there's a question there around the languages. Um, so whilst we haven't yet uh, determined which language students will offer, we are very much looking at offering languages in year seven, eight and year nine. Uh, and what that then means is once they do get to year 10, we will be in a position where we will be able to, to look at whether or not we can offer languages as a GCE, GCSE. Um, and, and again, that could potentially be through one of our enrichment or extended study sessions, because, again, we want to make we want to educate young people that are able to go and work internationally not just nationally. Um, and we are, again, we're, we're having conversations with, with other UTCs and um, with our educational partners to see which language we think would be most beneficial in that STEM field of work. So that's a, that's a really good question. Thank you for asking that. And um, there is a question about year nines there in terms of how many year nines are we expecting for this September? So uh, for this year, we are still accepting year nines into our normal, typical uh, programme of study, uh, and there are 100 places. So if you are here wanting to find out more about year nines, um, then, then please uh, email into uh, applications at gputc.com um, and we can talk in more detail about what the year nine process looks like. But that is done predominantly through our website. Um, and again, I'll talk about the year seven application process in a second. For year nines, year tens and year twelves, you still apply through our website uh, and, and our application form. Um, and then there'll be a, a phone call and a conversation just to make sure we we understand your child's background and, and vice versa. There are still places left in, in year nine, year 10 and year 12, uh, although they are filling up quick. So please do get your application forms in um, or at least give us a ring and speak to us about that. There's a, question, uh, there's a question about our, our Ofsted report, and that's a really good question. It's a really good point. And um, hopefully you, you'd have seen the Ofsted report. Um, if you haven't, I do encourage you to read that. Uh, the Ofsted report was over two years ago now, um, and, and it was about six months after I took over as principal. Um, and there's two things I want you to take from that, really. Um, number one is, is please do read that uh, and look at look at what they said about the leadership team. Look at what they said about the changes we were making right back then. Um, you know, I strongly believe that this is a fantastic school. You know, this is a really good school. 
uh, and the school that the inspectors saw on their inspection was a school in transition. Uh, it was a school moving away from its opening two years and moving towards something different. And I think that comes through really clear in the areas where they said that school needed to improve. Everything was historical. Everything was about previous students and previous staff. We are in a completely different place now. We have a completely different workforce. We have a completely different student body. It is a different school entirely to that school from a few years ago. Please read that report. Look at what it says about the fantastic behavior uh, and the fantastic personal development of our students. If it was good then, it's nothing short of outstanding now. The work that's been done on the quality of teaching, the work that's been done on developing our curriculum, the outcomes that our sixth form have got year on year, um, improving by over a grade at a time since that inspection. You know, we, we cannot wait for Ofsted to come back in and give us the grade that the school now deserves. And it's not many principals will sit and say that, but we cannot wait for them to come back in uh, and give us the judgment that we know the young people of the UTC deserve. And, and someone someone gave me an analogy once about a, a restaurant. And would you, uh, would you judge a restaurant now on a review from two years ago when the head chef was different and the staff were different and the menu was different? You wouldn't, you'd give it a new go. Um, and that's what I'm saying about us. This is a different school. That was only six months into me being principal. I'm now nearly three years in. The school is transformed from the school that it was two, three, four years ago. Um, please come in. You know, we'd love to show you around. We'd love to speak to you. Um, and we'd love to sort of talk about our, our experiences. Come and talk to the young people. Talk to our parents. Our parents and our students are our biggest advocates. Um, you know, don't, don't listen to me. Listen to them. They, they love the school. I love the school. Um, but that is a really good question about, about the Ofsted report, so thank you. Um, right, so, excellent question about applications. Let's, let's talk about the application process. So, again, uh, again, I mentioned right at the start there, um, we are mindful that this is very, very late in your decision and where to send your child. Um, we also know that the vast, vast majority of you will already be in receipt of a local authority offer for a place for September. So can I start by saying that all previous offers are guaranteed? So if you do choose to apply for the UTC and you are not successful for whatever reason, that does not impact on your previous offer. So your previous offer is, is safe, it's guaranteed. And if your UTC application isn't successful, you revert back to your previous offer. So please do not think an application to the UTC puts that at risk or jeopardizes a previous offer, that stays in place. The application forms um, can be downloaded from, from our school website. Um, once you fill the application form in, there is a, uh, a window that the local authority are putting on just for the UTC, which opens on the 31st of May and closes on the 18th of June. So there, there's about um, a two and a half week window there where they will, uh, they will look at applications and look at these admissions. So um, if you want to send it in now, I know my colleague at the local authority, Shelley, will tell you that they will just sit in an envelope in a pile uh, and they'll gather dust until the 31st of May. So please take your time in filling this in. There is no rush. It is not first come, first served. Um, the window opens on the 31st of May. That gives you two and a half weeks to, uh, to send that in to the local authority. It gives them plenty of time to process these applications. There is then a period of time after that where obviously the local authority need to, to process these and to send offers out. So parents will be informed if you've been successful by the 28th of June. That gives you July and August to, to look at uniform. It gives us two months to look at transition plans. So two really important sort of periods of time there. 31st of May to the 18th of June is the application window. 28th of June is when you will find out. And again, any current offer you've got or previous offers, they are guaranteed. So if you don't get uh, a place in the UTC, because again, we've only got 60 spaces um, for expeditionary learning to work. You know, it's crucial that we keep class sizes down uh, and we put qualified and experienced teachers in there. You will, uh, you will have that place guaranteed at your previous school. Um, there's one more question that's just come through, I think. Um, I'm aware that there's been one or two people have had a, a couple of uh, technical issues with, with the application form. Again, if there's any problems with that, 
do email the the applications at gputc.com email address um, and and Beth Malcolmson who I showed you I think a picture pit, uh, popped up at the front there um, she will absolutely be able to, to talk you through that um, she may be able to get you a paper copy out in the post if there are any problems with the application process please don't bother the the local authority we are more than happy to support with that and then we can uh, we can send that on on your behalf and um, if it is a problem that we can't resolve and it is something that we need a local authority support with then uh, then we have got a direct link there and we have got people we can talk to again on on your behalf and um, if that's the case i'm just having a look for, make sure there's nothing else is the end of all of the questions i've had sent through so unless anyone has has any further questions so that's, that's a really good question it's just come through actually um so the the local authority don't have um stipulations around the application process that sits with the school so in terms of our, our over subscription criteria um, it can be found on our school website. If you look at the admissions page, there is a, a bit there about our um, oversubscription criteria. But um, what that basically looks at is, first and foremost, obviously, we are uh, we are looking for students that are ambassadors for STEM and passionate around STEM subjects. Um, students in receipt of um, EHCPs and looked after children take priority. We then look at siblings of current UTC students. Uh, we look at children of UTC staff. Uh, and then we go down to the distance from the UTC. So that is the that's kind of fairly standard over subscription criteria. It's part of the national sort of admissions code. Um, so that is the same for the UTC. And um, all of that can be found on our website. It's under the admissions page. Our admissions policy is there. There is also a separate bit around the uh, the amendment to our admissions policy that was put in place just for the year sevens, which was approved as part of the previous consultation. And um, so that that is all there. That is a good question. So that looks like all the questions that um, that have come through. Um, if there are any further questions uh, that you think of, and I'm, and I'm sure you will think of some, please do go to uh, please do email applications at gputc.com. Um, again, we are running uh, COVID safe private tours on the 10th of May. So if you would like an opportunity to come in, um, then there is a chance to do that. And again, if you if you email applications at gputc.com. Then, then Beth will be able to coordinate that. There are some stipulations because it's still um, early in this process. Um, there will be stipulations in, with regards to um, mandatory um, lateral flow tests. Staff will be wearing masks. Obviously, uh, that is a training day at school, so there won't be children in the building. So we will be able to move around a little bit more freely. Um, but again, it gives you a chance to meet someone, have a conversation with someone um, and go there. And I believe just there in the chat is, uh, is a link that Beth's just put in there that you can uh, you can actually sign up and register your details. So if you just click on that link, that gives you a chance to uh, to to register for the day. And again, we can get you on the list. And I look forward to to meeting you on the day if you come in. Um, other than that, again, like I say, please do keep keep asking us questions. If you want to find out more about expeditionary learning um, or anything you've heard today, if anything you're not quite sure about, please do speak to us. You know, we're more than happy to help. We're more than happy to advise. Um, other than that, thank you so much for, for logging on tonight. Thank you for listening to me. Uh, thank you for, for, for all your contributions. Uh, and I look forward to meeting you soon. So thank you and take care. Good night.